On today's show, Tesla publishes its second quarter results for the year and shows that despite COVID-19, it's on a roll. Ford Performance Arm and RTR unveils the Hoonable one-off Ford Mustang Mark E1400, complete with seven motors, and Tesla accuses more than 20 of its former employees of stealing proprietary data and taking it with them to Rivian. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we're 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Ecotech Roundup show. I hope that you and yours are safe and that your week has been an excellent one. Thanks for joining me. Since Wednesday marked the publication of Tesla's second quarter results, then we really do have to start there this week. And what a quarter it turned out to be. Despite COVID and factory shutdowns that thoroughly impacted Tesla's vehicle production plans, Tesla still managed to deliver 90,891 cars during the quarter, with Tesla's overall revenue hitting the $6 billion mark. Aided by continued sales of regulatory zero emission credits, Tesla finished the quarter with a healthy profit of 50 cents per share using the GAAP accounting method. This thoroughly beat Wall Street expectations. It also marks the fourth quarter of Tesla turning a profit, meaning it's now poised to enter the lauded S&P 500. We'll have more news from the shareholder letter and call later in the show, so keep watching. An ongoing battle between LG Chem and SK Innovation could lead to a catastrophic disruption in automotive-grade lithium-ion battery supplies. So says both Volkswagen and Ford, both of which have petitioned the United States International Trade Commission to let SK Innovation produce electric car battery cells at its brand new battery production facility in Georgia. SK Innovation is currently being sued by LG Chem over alleged trade secret theft, and LG Chem says SK Innovation should be prevented from selling or making cells in the United States. LG Chem has claimed it can take over production from SK Innovation for both Volkswagen and Ford's electric vehicles, but Ford says this claim is not credible given some of the shortages experienced in the industry recently, most of which trace back to LG Chem. Frankly, it's messy. Audi has detailed a new research project this week involving its e-tron sport back and two-way power transfer. Working with the Hager Group, Audi has been testing out a new two-way 12 kilowatt domestic charging solution that makes it possible for the car to power either a home or provide power back to the electrical grid. It could be used during a blackout or to just feed power back to the local grid to help utilities engage in peak shaving during periods of high demand. In addition to using the car's onboard battery pack, the project has also experimented with a static energy storage solution with a capacity of around 9 kilowatt hours, which is essentially comparable to Tesla's Powerwall. It's early days, but I'm sure you'd love to be able to use an EV as a backup power solution. I know I most definitely would. After several weeks of teasing, Ford Performance, in collaboration with RTR Vehicles, has revealed the Ford Mustang Mark E 1400, an absolute beast of a car with not one, two, three or four electric motors, but seven. A one-off vehicle, the Mark E 1400 puts out 1400 horsepower and has a top speed in excess of 160 miles per hour. It's a true halo car for the Mustang Mark E, but this thing is absolutely bonkers, and so as you might expect, bonkers people have been driving it, like the Hoonigan legend that is Ken Block. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it's certainly only very tenuously linked to the production Mustang Mark E too, but frankly it's built to take names and turn heads, and I think it does that very well. Jeep has officially unveiled the production plug-in hybrid variants of its Renegade and Compass SUVs. Due to go on sale in Europe, the Renegade 4XE and Compass 4XE feature a total of 11.4 kilowatt hours of onboard storage, which Jeep claims can manage up to 50 kilometers of all-electric operation thanks to a dual motor all-wheel drivetrain. Capable of off-roading in electric mode, Jeep is keen to showcase that both of its cars are as capable as their internal combustion engine siblings, and says that for many Europeans, both can operate in electric-only mode for daily commutes. Considering Jeep hasn't offered plug-ins before, this is a start, 
But that range is very small compared to some other plug-in hybrids coming to the market from Mercedes-Benz and BMW. Renault announced this week that it's made and sold its 300,000th electric car in the European market. Achieving this milestone just under 10 years after it started electric production, it's important to note that this figure does not include any Renaults sold outside of Europe. Sadly, Renault didn't give us a global plug-in vehicle production figure, but I'd wager it would be closer to about 400,000 cars. While Renault makes many different electric models, including the Twizy, the Kangoo ZE, and the Master Traffic ZE, it's worth noting that the lion's share of its European sales were down to the Renault Zoe hatchback. In Renault's home market of France, it said that it sold more than 100,000 Zoes. In addition to celebrating the milestone, Renault says it expects sales figures to grow quite quickly since Renault Zoe sales were up nearly 50% year on year in the first half of this year. As promised, we heard more than just Tesla's financials on Wednesday during Tesla's quarterly earnings call. And the headline news is probably the fact that Tesla has officially confirmed it will be building its newest factory in Austin, Texas. The facility, which we've been covering for the last few weeks, will bring an estimated one billion US dollars to the local economy and will be home to the Tesla Model 3, Tesla Model Y and Tesla Cybertruck, as well as production for the Tesla Semi. Musk stated during the call that Tesla will use a nickel-rich lithium-ion battery for the Tesla Semi, shifting its electric car battery packs to cobalt-free LFP cells. In the near future, Musk hinted, the shortest range of any of its production cars would be around 300 miles per charge, thanks to that new battery chemistry. We'll hear more about it all on Battery Day. It's no secret that most legacy automakers have been reluctant to invest in electric vehicle technology, and those who often do have some substantial investment also going on in the hydrogen fuel cell world, developing both systems simultaneously. But this week, GM's chief sustainability officer, Dane Parker, confirmed that General Motors has no intention of bringing a hydrogen passenger fuel cell car to market despite years of development with Honda into the hydrogen fuel cell technology. Instead, it aims to focus on battery electric drivetrains for passenger vehicles, reserving fuel cell drivetrains only for heavy duty commercial and military vehicles. This is very different to GM's goals of just three years ago, when it said it would produce battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell passenger vehicles side by side. Rival companies are often suing each other for alleged misdeeds. I mean, you only have to look at the eight-year feud between Apple and Samsung over patents to see that in action. Now we can add Tesla and Rivian to that list after the former filed papers against the latter for allegedly supporting the stealing of proprietary information. Tesla claims in its court filings that as many as 20 former Tesla employees who then went to work at Rivian took secret information with them about recruitment policies, autonomous production, sales and service and charging networks. It now seeks the full force of the law to rectify this problem. Unlike some cases where allegations are pretty tenuous, Tesla claims it has documentary evidence and some confessions from the defendants in the case. Well, this could go on for a while. It's going to be one to watch. It's official. If you live in the UK, it's now cheaper to own an electric car than it is to own a petrol one. That's according to UK insurance company Direct Line, which released a study this week that shows that while an electric car may be 22% more expensive to buy, you'll save nearly 3% over 14 years of ownership, with annual running costs in the UK being 21% cheaper than a petrol car. Why the large difference? Well, that's easy fuel costs. UK petrol and diesel is far more expensive than it is in many parts of the world because of taxes, making electric car ownership a total no-brainer. And finally, I grew up on a farm in the UK and thus it's a kind of given that I'm fond of the original Land Rover. And for years, I've wanted an electric one, especially after driving a prototype electric Landy at the 65th anniversary celebrations for the vehicle. Now bespoke Land Rover specialists Twisted have announced that in the form of the Twisted NASE and NASE Plus, you'll be able to get an electric Defender.
While you're seeing footage of its internal combustion engine models, the NASE and NASE Plus are all electric Land Rovers re-engineered with Twisted's years of expert custom landing knowledge and feature a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack and a claimed 200 miles of range per charge. I'm not convinced those specs match up, but then even if they did, I couldn't afford one. They start at 185,000 US dollars. Ouch. And on that note of destroyed dreams, let's end today's show. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And of course, while you've got that browser open, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super easy to make the switch. And when you do, you're going to be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for many years to come. Oh, and I hope that the rest of the week is well. And if you see those Model Ys I told you about last week, let us know. I'll be making some more fun content for you all next week, but until then, please stay safe. Remember to wash your hands and stay healthy. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.